Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. When I drove in this morning, it was 44 degrees. I'm just glad you braved that freezing temperature to come here today. That's uh, nothing on those poor schmucks in the East Coast with their nor'easters and the snowstorms. We are suffering on the Central Coast here with those cold temps, I got to say. But I'm glad you made it. It's great to be together in worship. Would you stand as you're able? Let's join in our opening hymn. In our Easter worship, the season of Easter is upon us. You thought 40 days of Lent was good? How about 50 days of the Easter season until Pentecost? We gather today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you may be seated. So glad that you're here this morning. Today is uh, officially the uh, least attended Sunday in the church year, usually. I don't know why that is. Often the second worst is the Sunday after Christmas which makes sense with holidays and New Year's travel, but I cannot figure out for the life of me why the Sunday after Easter tends to be one of the lowest attended Sundays, because it moves around. It's not like it's always the same. I guess spring break might factor into it. Maybe everyone's just so worn out uh, with uh, Easter that they just need a break or whatever. But I always think some Sunday I'm going to come, the Sunday after Easter, and everyone that came on Easter, they're going to come again. And I'm going to fall down dead right there. That's how I'm going to heaven, right there. I'll be like, what? It rightly happened. 
But uh, thank you so much for everybody that did everything around Easter. It was just such an amazing celebration with Palm Sunday and Holy Week, and then, of course, Easter itself. It was really an all-hands-on-deck kind of a thing, and I, uh, many people uh, just brought their friends and family. It was just a lovely, lovely uh, time. So thank you. Uh, thank you a thousand times. Uh, thank you. That was just great. And since it's the first Sunday of the month, we always like to highlight some April birthdays. Was anyone born in April here in the room? Let's see what we got here. We got uh, Heather Houston. She was here on Easter, and she used, remember she used to be like this, and now she's like this, all grown up. So there you go. Uh, Heather was here. Julia Colton, happy birthday. Let's get my glass here in a minute here. Oh, Rich Schultz, happy birthday, Rich. Linda McNair, wonderful, happy birthday. And let's see what else we got here. Annalise and Penelope, uh, they were here. Now, they're two years old, if you can believe that. I don't know if you're on Facebook or Instagram, but uh, Matthew took a bunch of great footage of Easter and the, and the kids' egg hunt, and they figured prominently. I think their modeling career has just begun. They are so darn cute. And little Galen wasn't bad either. That was just great. And um, Oh, Breck Thomas, too. Happy birthday to you guys. So anyway, let's sing happy birthday in case anybody's watching. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday to you. Anyone get married in uh, April? We had the good ones here. I think they had 16 years. And Dave told me, uh, they, he said that he, uh, when they got married, it was the day before Easter. And so he thought, well, that'll be a great way to remember his anniversary. Maybe he forgot that Easter moves around. So it's usually within a week or so he usually gets it right, Jenna said. And the Drysdales were here. They've got their anniversary. And Scott and Louise Taylor. And uh, let's see, and Kelly and Brent Birch, happy anniversary uh, to all of you. That's exciting. So it's nice to celebrate those milestones and uh, think about what God is doing in the midst of our uh, lives and all of that. Uh, the other thing we'd like to highlight on uh, the first Sunday of the month is our new food of the month. And I could tell you guys liked this cake batter and frosting thing. I, I wasn't sure how that was going to go over, but boy, did we get a mountain of cake and um, brownie mixes and, um, and frosting. And so that's going to go over well. But this month we're doing peanut butter. And uh, I, I always love peanut butter. I think I have a, I need a support group for my peanut butter addiction. That's how much I love peanut butter. But I'm just going to walk on by. I'm not going to steal any peanut butter from the food pantry, but uh, I may even bring some. And that reminds me, if you've got some stuff that's getting near on, it doesn't have to be peanut butter. It could be anything. Canned goods that you know that are maybe running closer to their expiration. They won't give food out that's expired. That's kind of a rule they follow, thank goodness. But but they will give it right up into it. So feel free to give us anything you got that's non-perishable, and we'll make sure it gets to the right place. So that's very, very exciting. Well, friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Why don't you take a moment, stand, find someone you don't know, and wish them a happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hey, Frank, happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. Let's be Older than Fiji, huh? Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Well, glad to have you home. Did I tell you the Boy Scouts were camping this morning when I showed up, and they were intense, and I thought, holy moly, 44. I wonder how cold it was last night. If it was 44, it's 7 in the morning. That's something, but... Uh, woof. Well, in any case, yeah. Well, let's center our hearts as we begin our worship today, and uh, we'll use this... Uh, ancient discipline of the Kyrie. We'll just uh, think about all the things uh, going on in the world and just respond with that, Lord have mercy. So the, 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Let's pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, we rejoice in this season of celebration in awe of the love of Christ and the gift of his death and resurrection. Make us worthy of him and forever grateful for his sacrifice. Keep us solidly faithful and prayerful each and every day of our earthly lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand as you're able for the reading of the good news? Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The scripture reading is from Second Book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 14 through 21. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all so that those who might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of re reconciliation to us. 
So we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Well, you may be seated. And since it's still the Easter season, we can say, Christ is risen. (laughs) Well, friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I had a lovely time away this week. Speaking of low Sunday, I did get back on the train last night. They actually had to stop it on the way up to watch that uh, launch at Vandenberg. I don't know if any of you popped out around 730 but they launched a massive thing up into the sky and the train's not allowed to go by Surf Beach for whatever reason. So we got to peer out the window and see it shoot up into the stratosphere. Pretty impressive, I gotta say. And we had a lovely time down in Los Angeles kind of ferrying Micah from A to B so he could do his stuff. And uh, boy, is the Los Angeles traffic something I'm glad to not live in anymore. Even at uh, 2 a.m., that uh, 405 can just get you. But uh, we had a wonderful time and um, we always like uh, uh, you know, to do fun things while Micah's doing his thing, so uh, Cindy and I went to a Dodger game, which was a lot of fun on uh, Wednesday, and uh, we had a great, great time, and um, I don't know if you know, but uh, the Dodgers just hired a brand new wonderkin kind of a guy. He's a pitcher, but he's also a designated hitter, which kind of makes my head hurt with the National League, but there you go. I'm still not up for that, but, uh, but nonetheless, they... they, uh, they, they, they they, they pay, they're paying him $700 million. And as I say, I would have done it for half that. I don't know why they uh, didn't call me, but, but $700 million, it's pitcher. And as he was uh, coming up to the plate, you know, Cindy said, uh, she said, let's see if he earns his money. And wouldn't you know, uh, gets, uh, the pitch comes in, homers it right out into the center field, no problem, like it was nothing. And I thought, wow. $700 million. And I, I was thinking to myself, how on earth are they going to pay for that? Well, one way I know they're paying for it is um, I got a tray of nachos and it was 40 bucks. That's how they're paying for it. I don't know about you, but when I saw that, I thought she was kidding. I said, $40 for a tray of nachos. I thought, that's how they're paying Otani. That's what's going on right there. And, um, and then they had these, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, it's not in my people's culture, but uh, um, micheladas, and they were like 30 bucks for this michelada thing. I thought, man, that's how they're paying for Otani. And apparently they got rid of all the parking attendants because it took us like three hours to get in and uh, just about that to get out. It was ridiculous. I tell you what, I'm sure they had parking attendants, but boy, it was a mess. But in any case, I can't remember who they were playing, but it was three games and they crushed the Giants. That's right. That's right. Uh, our, our, we have kind of a divided congregation. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but being right in between Los Angeles and San Francisco, there are a few Giants fans, but we make them sit in the back, so it's okay. That's all right. It's a Dodger a kind of a day, and so we were happy about that. But if you're a Giants fan, Jesus still loves you, I think. I wouldn't worry about that too much. But we had a lovely, lovely time away, and it's important, I think, uh, to, to have that rhythm of life, isn't it, where you work, 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 and then you rest, 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 and then you work, 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 and you, you know, kind of that flow of Sabbath living. And I felt like this week was just great or for Cindy and I to kind of unplug a little bit and spend some extra time with Micah, and uh, especially after the, the Easter season that we've had. And so it was great, great to get away. And I hope the truth of this verse that uh, Louise was sharing, that uh, it's true for you as well, uh, where it says in the middle of it, if anyone is in Christ, there's a new creation. That's what we're hoping for, isn't it? That uh, somehow when we are in Christ, when we're connected with Him, when we've trusted our lives uh, to Jesus, that He is doing something in us so that He can do things uh, through us. And if we miss that, boy, we don't, we, we don't know how would we possibly do it otherwise. And so this passage that Paul writes really sums up, I think, what God is doing for us, especially uh, during this Easter season. It starts off with this, for the love of Christ urges us on. I hope that's where we're coming from, out of the love of Jesus. We're not just coming out of duty. We're not coming out of have-tos and shoulds or rules and regulations, but it's because God has loved us so much, that's why we're being urged on. And he says, because we are convinced that one has died for all, and therefore all died. Now, we'll come back to that, but that's a tough word for us today. 
that when we are in Christ, it means that we have died with him. And there are still parts of us that probably still need uh, to die. In fact, you can't really have a new creation until you take a peek at the old creation. And we don't have to go too far back in our family tree to find Adam and Eve and the mess that they made of things. Now, we can't put all the blame on them. Every generation since has made their own kind of mess. You don't have to look around the world too far to say, you know what, there's still some new creating that needs to be done, Lord. It's not finished yet. There's still some work uh, to do. And of course, we're a big part of that. But when you think of Adam and Eve, you know, turning over their birthright of being so closely connected with God in the Garden of Eden, being deceived uh, by the devil, and just basically turning over the keys uh, to him. So that when Jesus is tempted by the devil, do you remember that story in Matthew 4 and Luke 4 where the devil comes to Jesus and the last temptation in one of those gospels it says to, to, if you just bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. Well, was that the devil's to give? Well, perhaps because Adam and Eve handed the keys over to the devil. And it wasn't until Jesus' resurrection that that gets purchased back uh, for us. It's a beautiful story. In fact, when I think about Adam and Eve, I always tell this story at uh, uh, weddings. Uh, I, I, the story goes like this, that uh, uh, God came to Adam and said, um, okay, Adam, I know you need a helper and I'm going to make you the perfect wife. She's going to cook and clean and make the house wonderful. She's going to bow to your every woman. She's just going to be the whatever you can imagine. Uh, she's going to be it. And, uh, and Adam says, wow, what's that going to cost me? And God says, well, an arm and a leg. And uh, Adam says, well, what can I get for a rib? That's terrible. It's an awful joke. But uh, let me tell you the other one, just in case you, in case you want to stone me for that. But, and it basically goes like this. Uh, uh, Adam, uh, the Lord created Adam out of the dust of the earth. You know, in Genesis 2, we read that. And uh, makes Adam. And then he stands back and he says, you know what? I can do better. <laughs> and he did, didn't he? Eve's pretty good. So that's pretty amazing. So there, I tell that at weddings and they laugh about it as little as you did. So it's fine. Don't even worry about it. But uh, when we think about our ancestors and how they had messed things up, uh, we recognize that uh, creation needs to be redeemed. The old creation, the creation that exists now, it needs to be newly recreated. And so we need that for ourselves as well. And the way that happens, of course, is by uniting us with Jesus. And this is kind of the bad news of the equation. As Paul says right at the beginning here, and he says it in just about every letter he writes, he says, we are convinced that one has died for all, and therefore all died. Or as he writes in Romans 6, you know, in the ba in baptism, we are united in a death like his, so we can be raised uh, to life like he. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of the way this works. But the sad news is, with all this talk of death, it means that we have to die. Because Jesus didn't just die for us, he actually died as us. And when we think about the baptism ritual, you know, Lutherans, we tend to just kind of sprinkle, but the word baptize literally means to dunk, you know, to submerge. And that's kind of scary, you know, it's like a drowning in a way. Baptism is a death. And anytime we baptize even little babies, we say, you have been united to the death of Jesus so that you can be raised up uh, in new life. And so the way this new creation happens is that the old creation has to die. And so when Jesus is dying for your sins, you're actually dying with him. And you say, well, how can that be? I wasn't even born when Jesus was dying on the cross. Well, this will blow your mind, like one of those time travel movies. Do you ever watch time travel movies? I like the ones that are fun, you know, like Back to the Future. Do you remember Back to the Future and the DeLorean and they go back and, and remember they go into the future, to the, to the great unknown future of 2015 <laughs> and the world was just about as messed up as our 2015, I got to say. Actually, maybe more like our 2019 or 2020, but nonetheless, I, I like those kind of feel good uh, Back to the Future kind of movies, but the ones that like Tenet and the other ones that just make my head hurt because I can't understand them. I can't quite do that. But the way the time travel works, we can't go back. But somehow, in God's economy, he is able to die on the cross, not just for you, but literally with you, even if you weren't born, because God thought of you before the foundation of the world. God was thinking 
about you, about how you would be dying with Christ on the cross, raised up with him, and here we are uh, sitting today, all of this time later, ready to make our way into heaven someday. I mean, it's amazing to think about how God has all of this in his mind, uh, that we were predestined before the foundation of the world, and of course, we have the choice of following him or not. I mean, how do you put all those together? It's like one of those time travel movies. It kind of makes your head hurt, and yet that's what the Bible teaches. Somehow, when he dies, we die. When he rises, we rise. And where are we now? Jesus says, or rather Paul says in Colossians, that we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ. And in Ephesians, we get this sense that, that somehow Jesus is in heaven. And in some ways, you and I, if we are in Christ, we're with him. You say, Greg, I'm just sitting right here in the pew. <laughs> How can I be dying with Jesus and seated in the heavenly places all at the same time as, as I'm listening to you? I mean, it, it just kind of makes your head spin a little bit, and yet that's the promise of being a new creation. Now, the problem with being a new creation, or at least one of the struggles we have, is that sometimes we don't believe it, especially for ourselves. You know, the way we talk to ourselves, if you saw someone else talking to someone else the way you talk to yourself, you would probably get up and interrupt them and say, excuse me, that's rude, that's hateful, that's just mean. Why would you ever talk to someone like that? And yet, what goes on in our own minds sometimes when we call ourselves dumb or stupid or I can't believe you did that and we kind of just beat ourselves up a bit. I don't know if you do that, but I've done that for years and I think to myself, Lord, save me from that. Let me have the truth of what you think of me, which as we saw in this reading Louise shared, that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Or some translations read, he is a new creation, meaning it's you, it's, it's not just he, she, it's everybody, you know, you are a new creation. And yet for whatever reason, instead of listening to that, I grab the recordings from the old creation and I just play those back in my head over and over again. Uh, and it's not even from years ago. It could be from 10 minutes ago, or it could be even in the moment. We just kind of have this mean-spirited voice that speaks to us. Now, if you've gotten rid of that, well, praise God. But a lot of us, boy, we just need to keep putting that uh, to death. And that's the tough news of this passage. It's great to be a new creation, but it says, everything old has passed away. Well, that's a nice way of saying died, isn't it? We don't tell anyone that someone died anymore. What do we say? Oh, they passed away. <laughs> it's like we're afraid to even say, no, nope, they died. They kicked the bucket. They are no longer here. And that's what he's saying about the old creation. And so you and I need to grab a hold of that. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away and everything has become new. But in that process, it still feels like there's some work to be done. I mean, at some level, Jesus already accomplished everything that was needed doing at the cross. It's done. It is finished, he says. And yet, all of these years later, if we are in Christ, we are new creations. And yet, I don't know if you feel this way, but it still seems like there's some work to be done. There's still some progress to be made. It's not like we've attained the pinnacle of spiritual perfection when we were confirmed at, in the eighth grade or something. That's not the way it works, right? There's still some chiseling that God needs to do in these uh, stone creations that we are so that we can be more like Him. And during this Easter season, I'm hoping we can look at some great examples of people that Jesus gets a hold of and transforms their lives. He just turns them into new creations. Not that they're perfect. They're, no one's going to be a perfect example, but they are living examples. It's like they're laboratories where people can look at it and say, yes, I see what God is doing in you. And just like this little plant, you know, I love how they do the stop motion thing where they, or they speed it up over time or they take, I don't know how they do it, but you know what I'm saying. They, they, you can kind of see these plants unfurl, and, and minute by minute or even day by day, you might not see much, but when you look back over time, you see growth, and hopefully that's true for you and I, that the more time you spend with Jesus, the more you look like Him, the more you sound like Him, the more you love like Him, so much so that that's the job He's given us. 
All this is from God, Paul says, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's one of the things we celebrate over this Easter season is that we are called to this exact ministry of reconciling people to God, connecting people that are far from God, and we bring them close to God. You say, I'm not even slightly equipped to do that. How can I possibly do that? Well, Paul says, you're a new creation. And whatever work God has done in you, that's going to attract people to come uh, to Him. And you may say, well, God, you still got a lot of work to do. I know it. <laughs> that's why Jesus says, He doesn't just say, pick up your cross and follow me. In one of the Gospels, He says, pick up your cross daily and follow me, because this is going to be a process for our entire lives. It's already done, but boy, does it feel like there's still some work to do. In fact, you could probably be on a good path if it, when in the morning when you woke up before that kind of angry troll or whatever voice in your head might be uh, yelling at you, if you just looked in the mirror and you just quoted this month's memory verse. In fact, well, I think I have a slide for that, Evan, if you want to put that up. It's this exact verse from, first, from 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let's just read that together. Imagine you're looking at yourself in the mirror and saying this. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. If you just did that into the mirror every morning, I don't know if that would shape the course of your day differently. If you'd have a different sense of expectation, Lord, who, who are we going to reconcile to you uh, today, Lord? How are you going to make me into more of a new creation uh, today? And then you're on the lookout. You're kind of wondering. In fact, Paul sums it up with this last part of our verse. He says, for our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know, this process that God is working in us, it's, it's taking everything good and amazing and loving and blessed that was in Jesus, and He's transferring it to you. And this is a pretty good deal on our part, because what do we transfer to Him? All of our sin and ick and problems, we give that to Him so that He can take that on the cross and we receive the righteousness of God. Now, you probably wouldn't want to walk around saying, look how righteous I am. <laughs> but you could walk around saying, look how righteous Jesus is. That would be part of our ministry of reconciliation. Now, if you still feel like you're a work in progress, I totally get it. I feel that same way myself. I think, Lord, you've still got a lot of work to do, but I'm going to trust you in this process and one of the ways we're going to try to do that this month is with this simple memory verse. We'll have some exciting ways over the month to try to get it in your heads. Maybe you already have it memorized in this translation or another one, but uh, I, for one, love to take these verses and not just read them, but to literally know them so well I can just speak them out. And I just find that to be a very helpful, helpful tool. Uh, much like we do when we come to communion, we say the same story, and we remind ourselves over and over that God is here with us. I mean, it couldn't be more explicit that we literally take Jesus into ourselves so that we can become a more like Him. And so this daily process of reflection and allowing that new creation to take even deeper root, well, it's like John says in his letter, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But as we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's take a moment for some silent confession. Just agree with God about that work that still needs to be done. And Lord, hear us as we pray aloud together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Would you stand as you're able and let's hear this good news once again that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God does forgive us all our sin. To those who believe in Jesus, he gives power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, let's continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection is open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so it was on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Later that same night, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. And Lord, make us bold to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Well, you may be seated. We'll invite our communion assistant forward. This morning with communion, we'll be doing intinction. Just invite you to form a line and we'll serve you uh, the bread. And of course, if you have a gluten-free need, just to put up a finger and let us know. We'll make sure to get the proper bread for you. And you probably know this, but I'll share it again anyways to make sure. And that is the uh, chalice is divided. And the big part of the chalice is wine. The small part is grape juice. And so we'll let you pick what you like on that. And if you come to communion this morning, I hope you'll come with the expectation that even as a work in progress, God is here and that he's making you into a new creation this morning. Amen. Which would you like? Here we go. So come, for all is now ready at the Lord's table.
let's take a moment to pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Lord, for dying for us, for dying as us in our place. We thank you for this good news of Easter, that if we've died with you, we're raised with you, and that you are turning us into new creations. Lord, we want to submit, we want to partner, we want to be with you in this process. We know it's lifelong, and we are in it. So save us, Lord, from giving up or giving in. Just help us to be on the journey with you. And we thank you, Jesus, for entrusting this mission to us that we could be your ministers of reconciliation, that somehow the work you're doing in our lives would attract other peoples to connect with you. So make us ready, Lord, for those conversations, that chance to give testimony for the work that you're doing. We do thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring all of our concerns into your capable hands. Help us to trust you for all those impossible things. We do pray for miraculous healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for new possibilities. And especially this morning, we lift up everyone on our prayer list. Thank you, Lord, for Betty and Joyce and Amanda, Linda and Eric, Jan, Marilyn, for Cleo and Sean. Brian, Carl, Alice, and all those we name before you now. Lord, sustain them, remind them of the grace they have in you, and bring healing and strength to their situations. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if I can invite you to stand one more time, let's share together these words of faith from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, you may be seated. At this time, we'll receive our morning offering. And it is a great opportunity to, to express our love for God and this ministry of reconciliation that he's entrusted to us. We want to see St. John's here for generations to come. And so thanks for all of your great, great giving. And thanks for the big uh, day yesterday. It was a nice work day here around St. John's. I was riding a train, so I didn't get to be a part of it. But I heard we had some folks out. I, did it go well, Mel? Did I hear it was okay? Yeah. All right. And uh, lots of good work around the property. It's never ending, isn't it? There's always something to be done. And Lois said today that she's on a new medication that uh, is allowing her to sleep a lot better. She was having a devil of a time trying to get some good rest. And you know how you are when you can't sleep. It's just hard to do anything. So keep praying for her uh, leg and all that. She's still struggling with healing up. But, uh, but she's here, and we're just so grateful for everyone that came out. And as I said, everybody that made Easter happen, I mean, it was amazing. Uh, just a great, great week. A couple things coming up you want to be aware of, uh, ways to serve. Uh, one is, uh, we've got a kitchen cleaning coming up. Is that this Wednesday? I guess it is, at 10 a.m. So if, you, uh, if your kitchen is so spotless you don't have anything to do, come and clean the church kitchen. Or even if your kitchen's a mess, come and clean the church kitchen. That's uh, uh, something the women's ministry sponsors about every 10 years or so. Is that right? No, I think it's every year, I think is the idea. And yeah, that's great. So anything more we need to know about that, Louise? Or is that good, just to make it known if anyone wants to come? Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, that's great. Yeah, thank you for that. And then you can also come and knit scarves that day. We've got a dresser girl sewing party coming up. And uh, if you love to use your craftiness, it's a great way to uh, uh, connect with other folks around St. John's. I think we mentioned it before, but new member class coming up. So if you're new, uh, sign up for that. Get to know us a little bit better and see if you want to maybe 
uh, come and be a part of St. John's more officially. Uh, there's some fun things coming up this month as well. All of it's fun, but uh, even cleaning the kitchen can be fun if you're with the right people. Is that right? Yeah. And so uh, we've got a uh, fun fitness and fellowship walk at the uh, Johnson Trail. And so if you're an outdoors person and you want to, there's several different trails you can do. Beautiful, beautiful hike. And uh, so ch we'll check in with Adrian if you've got some questions about that. And then toward the end of the month, we're going to have a bingo potluck. And uh, we, we talked Frank into calling it again. So when you see Frank, make sure you tell him the numbers you want uh, for your thing. So that's going to be a fun evening. And everyone just brings uh, potluck, catches, catch, can, and everybody has a great time. And uh, we'll get out our bingo set is about, it's like an antique. How old is that bingo set, Frank? It's got to be a long, that bingo set must be from, what would you guess? Must be from the 60s or something. It goes way back from my, our childhoods, I think. But uh, in any case, come and be a part of that bingo. Anything else we should be highlighting today? I'm just glad I wasn't sleeping out with the Boy Scouts. That, to me, I just <laughs> shudder every time I look out there and see those tents. I thought it was 44 degrees. Okay. Well, with that, uh, why don't we stand and we'll head out once more uh, with God's blessing. And your last Sunday with us, heading back to Bend, Oregon. And when do you actually leave, leave? Friday. Friday. Okay. Well, we'll say our cheerful goodbyes over some delicious treats. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, when we had our uh, Monday Thursday service, or not service, Seder dinner, uh, one of the things that you eat in the Passover is called the cheroset, and it's that apple sweetness, you know? Well, Pam took the leftover cheroset, and she made it into this amazing coffee cake. So you got to try it. It's super moist and delicious. But uh, in any case, that's, the, that's blessing enough. But I'll give you the official blessing as well. <laughs> Friends, may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make His face to shine upon us, be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day. Thanks for being in worship today, friends. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So glad to have you back. Thank you.